and welcome to the Trinity Grade 4 song, uh, The Tulip Swing, which is in the current series of 2016 to 2019. So uh, this is a nice blues with lots of interesting features. Um, great little uh, second line going on in the bass, so uh, we'll be looking at those kind of features. Um, quite a long song because there's uh, repeats in it as well, so um, uh, a good amount of work to be done to get through the song. Of course, being a blues, um, it's in swing time, so that's the way it's going to be played if we just play a few notes from there. Yeah, just repeating some notes, but um, you're getting the idea of the swing rhythm. Uh, remember that the song is in A major, so we've got three sharps, C sharp, F sharp and G sharp, and then there are accidentals that appear along the way, creating some lovely little uh, chromatic runs. Um, maybe worth us just having a look uh, at the first bar, just to get us an idea of how to look at uh, a song like this, if you're interested in um, just seeing how the bass line goes to start with, uh, because the melody line you'll probably be able to play fairly comfortably. But let's have a look at that bass line. So we start off with uh, A, then two A sharps, fret ones, and then a B. Okay, so there's your kind of um, chromatic run from A to B. Then we've got an F natural. Um, in the second bar. So always well worth just going through um, a few bars just to hear how that uh, bass line runs. So perhaps let's do that. So then it changes there. We've got a distinct change. So um, now you can hear that the uh, the bass line itself is uh, playing a nice little tune on its own and giving a great support. Right, so let's go through. Um, we'll play the first uh, little phrase, which is in bars one and two. Uh, and let me explain some of the fingerings that have been put down. Um, there are different fingerings. Of course, we can work our own fingerings out. Uh, but the main aim, of course, is to keep the walking fingers going and not trying to play double fingers where you get a finger trying to immediately repeat a note afterwards. It's quite difficult in a swing rhythm uh, to get your fingers moving fast enough to do that. So um, if I look at the right hand for the first part, we start with an M. Uh, we've got a C sharp with finger three. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so it's M, A, M for the C sharp and E's. Um, so we've got M, A, M. And then it changes to I M I. Okay, and the reason for that is because uh, it's just keeping a set of alternating fingers going, which is kind of comfortable across the strings. M, of course, for string two, A string one, M again string two. Now, if you're going to alternate again, that means you'd bring uh, your A finger down to string two, which is okay, uh, but then you're getting crossed fingers later on after that. So by going to I, index M I it just means that we're alternating our fingers all the time yes we're using three fingers but no problem with that and it's well worth doing um, if you struggle with that by having the left hand there take the left hand away and just try it as this just go uh, M A M I M I yeah and you can just come that with open strings it's quite a useful technique to do. So let's have a look finger three. Uh, the reason finger three is there is because uh, later on we're in the next bar we're going to play fingers two and four although I have seen uh, people attempt uh, different fingerings and quite successfully so I'll show you those as well. Um, so uh, we start off with uh, the first bar See, I'm being nice and powerful on my bass line here. I'm not holding back on my bass line because I want it to, to have a good come through as well. It's not just an accompaniment. It's a nice little tune in its own right. Now, fingers two and four, of course, that meant finger two was free to play that note there, that um, B. Then we've got 
finger one for F natural down to E. Um, what I've seen some people do is um, play the, the last beat of the first bar, okay, the two A's, uh, A and C sharp, sorry, and then just um, what they do is, uh, should be A sharp, of course, uh, and C sharp, and then they just kind of bring finger one up. Okay, so that's okay, but now you've got to move finger one from uh, the B to the F, it's not a problem in a song of this tempo, so don't work too worried about that. But if you want good practice to get nice transitions without fingers jumping around, it's fingers two and four is the best option. Okay, so I'll carry on from there. Now we've got F sharp, finger one, finger four for the G sharp, and that allows finger two to prepare itself now to play the C sharp in bar three. And that's the reason finger two was there this time. Then we get our A sharps again. Now, a slight change. Um, again, I would suggest you use the fingerings here. So we've got a D and an F sharp. Um, yeah, A, M, M plays the D and then index for the B um, and then M again for the A, so that comes out as being like that. Then what I do, uh, of course I move finger one down. Uh, in fact, I used finger one on an A, and I think that's the reason I did that, is because then I just move finger one down to the G sharp. And there's my run at the end, so G sharp. That's better, if I get that correct. Um, and then that takes us, of course, we've used fingers two and four for the F sharp and G sharp, big stretch there to get that F sharp in. And finger three now needs to come down to prepare itself uh, for that. It's a little bit awkward, but uh, it's doable uh, at this tempo. So we've got a little repeat of those bars. Then our fingers two and four. F sharp, G sharp. Now a slight change, so um, I put my fingers two and one down, it's like a D chord really, but uh, so I feel comfortable putting those fingers straight down. Um, we've got a uh, high F sharp. Okay, so that's just a nice rhythm. Move finger one down, middle, but I play the D with my index finger, not the thumb as written in the text, uh, because it's just convenient for middle G sharp and then uh, index finger to play the D and then I can play the high A. Now here's a variation, uh, you can use finger two for that A at the end of that bar there, uh, bar seven, uh, but I'm going to suggest that we use finger four, okay? And the reason is because after that A in bar eight um, finger four is suggested to play the A, finger two, the E flat, fret one, of course, of string uh, four, the D string, low F. Okay, so my finger four was there ready and waiting. Okay, so that means I can just go swap finger, uh, swap finger two to the G sharp. Uh, yeah, and I've got E, D, and G sharp. Okay, so just a nice transition in time going da, da. Okay. Um, so uh, probably uh, a radical variation really for some people if you kind of see the finger two on the A you want to play that. Uh, it just means that then you've got to move the whole hand and the fingers by playing but by playing the A uh, the E A finger four. That means now that I can just go and swap those fingers around. So I hope that's just a uh, little useful addition um, to uh, what's written in the text. But of course, like most things, you can find your own fingerings, um, but don't try too many different ones. Just try the ones that keep it easy for you. Uh, the first section repeats again, of course, but we have a different ending from the first ending. So we get um, the same again, two and one go down. This is bar nine. There's my G sharp. 
index playing uh, the, the D now. Um, e, A, bass run. Finger one plays the B, finger two plays the B sharp, which we know is note C, but we'll call it B sharp, because uh, we're going to C sharp afterwards. So we get. And then that leads us into the second half of the song, uh, which I'll do on the second video uh, of this song, The Tulip Swing. <laughs> 